Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of So Comfort with Amanda. I'm your host Amanda and I'm so excited you are here today to learn a little bit more about sewing. Today's topic is going to be on pressing. Now pressing is something that I hated growing up. I thought it was something my mom did and told me to do for torture. I really did because I was a little kid when I started. I was only eight years old when I started quilting and I really hated using that big clunky heavy iron. But I've come to learn there's a reason and there's a reason that we have to use it. And I'm going to show you what I want to call my quilt of shame. This is one I did in college and it's literally been sitting here for years because I can't fix it. And it started out with these lovely nine patch blocks and they look great so I sewed them all together no pressing involved anywhere it looks pressed because it's been sitting in a closet what you will have a little bit of difficulty seeing on camera ah there it is actually it's very clear nothing matches up all of the blocks are slightly different they're slightly different sizes they go into the frames in different places and when you're making a quilt with frames it's supposed to be an easy quilt because it doesn't take that much time it's not fussy little blocks it takes forever to make but it has to be accurate and the only way to make it accurate is to press i'm sorry to say it's something that i've learned the hard way um, as you can see my lovely corvette quilt that's been sitting here since 2004 <laughs> um, and this is 2021 so that gives you an idea of how old it is um, another thing I actually showed you guys the frames I did not do the frames the right way on this quilt again learning the hard way why we have to do the things that I'm teaching you now so let me get out the project we've been working on bye bye quilt of shame and let's start with this project so this is the peppermint quilt that we've been working on. And I actually went ahead and pre-pressed the bottom and you can see there's some nice, crisp, clean lines. And up here, it's soft and kind of marshmallowy. So what happens when you don't press and it's a fresh quilt is nothing's crisp. Nothing is set in place. So when you go to put your borders on, What's going to happen is one border is going to be larger than the other because, or you're going to get pinches because you didn't do the next step. So we have to do the finishing steps, whether we like it or not. So I'm going to go ahead and turn around the camera and show you the proper way to press a quilt. This is an also be used on your doll clothes or any other item that you have to press. I am here at the ironing board and I have my P2 Professional Rowenta. This iron isn't made anymore, however, you don't have to have a professional iron. You just need to have one that has a cotton setting, which is why I'm turning it around. I want you to see that. So you just need something that has a cotton setting. Steam is preferred for quilting when you're doing a long piece. But when you're doing individual blocks, you actually want to turn your steam off. You can also use, this one's still available, the Steam Fast for piecing. This is great for pressing small pieces together that, or doll clothes, something that's small and intricate. Um, I'm not going to show it to you right now because it isn't um, heavy enough to do what we want. So this is a small ironing board. This is a, it has Teflon pressing cloth on it. You can use the large ironing board I have behind me, um, which is a standard ironing board. So the first thing we're going to do when we press is we're going to start from the back side of our quilt, pillowcase, doll clothes, anything, anything you're making. You want to start on the back side and we're going to pick up our iron and we are going to press it on our fabric and hold for one, two, three seconds. And as you can see, that lays a nice clean line. And we're going to do that again the entire way down. This is a very slow process if you do it right. And that's why I used to call it slow torture when I was eight years old. 
I still think it's slow torture, but I understand it has a point. Okay. So the other thing you'll see is you always press to the dark side of your fabric. Now, something I just noticed, this is actually turned. If I'm doing this right, I would come in here with my seam ripper, pop this seam, sew it from here to here, and flip this back down. I'll do that later, but that's how you repair twists. Otherwise, when you quilt, it's going to create a bubble in the back of your quilt. So this is another thing that we want to go ahead and fix, something I used to not do, and I had a whole lot of messy quilts when I was in college and middle school. Okay, so we just did this pink, and as you can see, it's nice and crisp. We're gonna go ahead and do the top side now. And on the top side, you can actually do an iron, which means you glide it along the fabric. So ironing is gliding with pressure along the fabric, and pressing is literally a press. So the steam is actually used on the top, and you can hear it to help you set our project. So that sets it, and this is how it's going to look in the end. And that actually helps me to get my edge straight instead of stair-stepped like the other one I showed you. Now I'm going to do the rest of the quilt and I'll um, show you what it looks like when it's done. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and show you how this looks now that I've finished pressing the entire project. And I'm going to try and go kind of slow so you can see all the bubbles are gone, the lines are nice and crisp, and you can see exactly how the pieces have decided to align. Now something I have noticed is that the alignment is not 100% the same on these pink pieces. And because I'm not making this quilt for competition or uh, trying to win a blue ribbon or money or anything else, it's just meant to be a comfort blanket for a child, possibly my own, I'm going to let it go. And something my mother used to tell me is that if you can't see it from the side of a galloping horse, then let it ride. You can't, it's not going to be noticeable by the people that are receiving your quilts and enjoying them. So don't worry about it. If it is messing up your quilt, like the first one I showed you where it stair-stepped, then you might want to go ahead and figure out what happened, why it's not aligning, um, and make changes. But unless it's happening like that, just let it go. So I hope this video has been of value to you and you learned a little bit about pressing the tools that are needed, the techniques, and why we need to do it. If you have gained value from this video, please give us a thumbs up on YouTube and subscribe to the channel, So Comfort with Amanda. Until next time, please keep learning to sew and painting with fabric. Have a wonderful day.